Hello and welcome to another IBC EMINA webinar. Uh, my name is Jasna Suchadouls. I am uh, on the board of IABC EMINA. Uh, and our today's guest speaker is Mike Pounsford, uh, who is current president of IABC UK um, and also uh, owner of uh, his own business, uh, Kuraval. Uh, hi, Mike. Hi, Jasna. How are you? Hello, everybody. Uh, Good. Um, so we are excited to hear you discuss the importance of purpose and uh, the approaches to alignment uh, in your today's webinar. Um, and just before you start, um, I just want to um, let uh, everyone know that uh, we'll be taking questions in the questions box. So um, Mike will be taking questions at the end. Uh, please let us know if you have any um, uh, also as he as he goes along. You can uh, write them down in the questions box, and I will read them out loud uh, when we when Mike uh, ends his uh, presentation. And now I will uh, disappear to uh, let you, Mike, take the take the floor, take the audience. Okay, thank you, Yasna, um, and um, hello, everybody, and thanks very much for for joining this webinar. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Um, I gather from Yasna there's been a lot of interest in this session. Um, that doesn't come as a great surprise to me. I think there's a lot of people who I'm talking to who are saying they're interested in this subject um, about purpose and, and how we build purpose and align people with purpose. And I think it's a reflection of what's going on in the world at the moment, actually. I think there's a lot of uncertainty out there in terms of economics and in terms of politics. And for us in Amina, and especially in the UK with Brexit and what have you going on, it's, it's uh, very uncertain times. I think also the, um, we're learning a lot about how people work and how we operate as human beings. And we'll come on to this a bit later. There's a lot of evidence that purpose and, and helping people to focus on the things they do for other people is increasingly important just to, to help people perform at their best. Um, so it's, sort of, it's, it's an interesting subject. There's a lot of interest in it. I, I'm, I've been interested in the subject for a long time, actually. I, if I go back quite a way, I remember doing a study some time ago where we were looking at the performance of a retail, two retail organizations. One was a DIY retailer and one was a, a bank. They both had large networks. And we were interested in comparing how the stores or the branches uh, worked. We, we looked at some high performing branches and stores and compared them to average performing branches and stores. And we sent a team of researchers to these different stores to see, see if we could work out what it was that was special about the high performing branches. These were branches that did well in terms of customer service or in terms of their profitability and performance. Um, and, and when the researchers came together and we compared notes, one of the first things that I remember noticing, and I remember we all noticed, was that as you walked into a high performing branch, or a store, you knew you were in a high performing area. There was something in the air as you walked in it. Kind of, we sort of thought, oh, that's interesting. Don't know quite what to make of that. When we started to look at the hard data beyond this sort of emotional reaction that we'd had, we began to see, and when we compared the research that had been done amongst the employees in the high performing versus the average performing branches, we began to see very, very little difference between the two, except for two areas. One was the way in which people perceived the manager, and the, and the second was the area they perceived the supervisory in terms of their communication skills and style. And what stood out in the high performing branches was that the managers were better at sharing a sense of the store or the branch goals and their purpose about that. They were better at talking about their customers and their customer needs. And they were better at creating that sense of what we're here to do in terms of a joint endeavor, in terms of what we're trying to, to do in terms of helping our, our, our customers and our people. And that sense of a common shared goals and a shared purpose permeated through to better internal meetings, better communication between shifts, um, better operations because people listen to each other and, and developed on each other's ideas and, and better service to their customers. So right at the coal face, in terms of how a store or a branch performs, that sense of a common purpose made a difference in terms of how those um, stores and branches reacted, that uh, performed. So that was some time ago. And since then, I've set up a business, um, built a business for WPP Group around brand engagement. And in 2001, I set up my own business, which I've been doing for about 18 years, helping companies develop communication strategies to drive change and transformation. 
And I don't think that purpose theme and that, that importance of helping people focus on what we're trying to do is, has ever been more important. So although those, are, those lessons were learned some time ago, I think they're really relevant to today. And what I, come, what I want to come on to a bit later is, is how, why they're so, so relevant and, and, and why they matter. What I'm going to do is structure this session into three main segments. One, I'm going to talk about what, what is purpose, what do we mean by purpose? And there I want to talk about how purpose is about um, why we exist and who we work for, what we do for other people. Then I want to talk about why that's so important. And I want to use some fairly, what I think is quite compelling evidence about why it's important. Um, and then I want to talk about finding, sharing and aligning people with purpose. I'm hoping as we go through this, there'll be, there'll be um, stuff that you can use with your colleagues, uh, especially around that sort of why it's so important and how we can develop it that might be helpful. So that's the structure. Yasna, Yasna mentioned a moment ago about typing questions in as we go along. I'd like to leave a bit of time at the end to respond to any questions that you might have, any particular challenges that you have or concerns or things you'd like to discuss, or things you might want to react to and, uh, and challenge in, in terms of what I've talked about. So don't hesitate to type in as we go along and then we'll, we'll, we'll pick those up towards the end. So, so let's kick off just talking about what this thing purpose, what it is, and and um, and what it means. So for me, purpose defines what we are here to do, and importantly, who we're here to do it for. It's 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 provide it's creating meaning that goes beyond profit or results. Um, a purposeful organisations are inspired by a clear role in the world uh, that offers a reason for being and it informs people's goals, values, and strategies. It what it's what brings us together working for this business. Now, I want to distinguish between personal purpose and organizational purpose because we've all met and we've all, we all know people who have a personal sense of purposes. Um, we, we might know people who are spiritual and have a sense of purpose in that sense. I don't want to particularly look at that, although at the end I will mention some resources that might be worth exploring if you're interested in that area. I'm more interested in the organizational purpose and how we help align people with that. So what is... Um, I guess my definition of purpose, it's why we exist, what we're here to do for others. And I do distinguish that from vision, which is what things will look like if we're successful, as far as I'm concerned. And then the strategy are the things that we will do to move towards our vision. So for me, that's the sort of the way I'd, I'd map out those different things. And I think having those things are all important. I think the terminology is slightly less important because I've worked with organizations who to have a vision which I think is very much a purpose statement. What matters is not whether or not it's labeled as vision or purpose, so long as it's, consist it's used consistently, consistently within the organizations and people within the organizations know what it is that they're talking about. We'll come back to that a little bit later. So anyway, that's the sort of what, that's what I'd see as the, the difference between purpose, vision and strategy. We just look at what that actually translates to in terms of some, some organizations that I suspect you're familiar with. Oxfam, the leading charity, uh, Vodafone, the, the leading telecoms company, and HM Revenue and Customs, for those of you outside the UK and Amina, that's the, the UK organization that generates the money that allows the UK government to do what it does. Now I've just flagged up three of the, the purpose statements that those organizations have for themselves. And I won't read through them, you can read them for yourself, but what I, what I just want to um, flag up is this point that they all talk to why we exist and they all talk to who we're doing, what we're doing for, who, who we do things for. Uh, and they don't talk about uh, results or profitability or things like that. So purpose is above that, it's, it's the meaning of, of why we exist. And if we just quickly look at the vision statements, the vision statements here for the same organizations, they're talking about what we will see happening if we're successful. So the purpose is about why we're here, what we're here to do. Vision's about what will, be, what will happen if we're successful. We look a bit more broadly at some other examples of purpose statements. Um, and I'm putting these up because they can, this, these can be quite useful resources. I, I use these to get people to think about which kind of purpose state, which purpose statements resonate for us and why does that resonate for us and, and why, is that, uh, why is that important for us? They can be useful triggers for, for a helpful conversation. So there's some, some companies we've all heard of, I'm sure. Um, again, I won't read through the, all the different purpose statements. Up, 
I will flag up something that if you if you read those different purpose statements, you'll see that the, the way they create meaning for those organizations is different. So you've got somebody like Google who's talking about organizing the world's information and making it universally accessible and useful. Their, their meanings about what we do for, for, for everybody, it's a kind of universality principle. Whereas if you look at GSK, it's more about how we improve the lot of mankind. You know, we're helping people to do more, feel better, and live longer. Or Amazon, they're talking about excellence, you know, being the world's most customer-centric company. Or Samsung's focusing on innovation, you know, we're gonna be at the leading edge creating new things. Or Starbucks is talking about enriching the human spirit. And, and interestingly, Bain, the management consulting firm, did some work in 2007 and identified those themes as some of the core themes that you see in vision statements, uh, in purpose statements from, from different organizations. So purpose is all about creating meaning and it's about focusing on what we do for other people. What I'm gonna do now is just gonna uh, pause for a minute and I'm gonna ask you to uh, just respond to a couple of questions. We'll do this um, a couple of times in this session. Um, so I've got two questions I'd like you to think about. First of all is we have a clear purpose and secondly, our purpose is focused on what we do for others. And if you think about this for your own organizations, or if you're an independent, perhaps think about it for yourself or for some of your clients. I think I need to hand back to you now, Yasna, to run the poll. Yes, I just ran it, so uh, it's in progress. The majority is saying yes, and I will now close the poll so we can see the, the results. Seventy-eight and twenty-two. Should we should we run the second one and then we'll come back and talk about both of them? Okay. Okay, we're collecting responses. Seventy, eighty percent of attendees voted. Okay, it's not climbing anymore, so I'll close the poll and share the results. Okay, brilliant. Well, first of all, thanks very much for, for participating in the poll. Um, it's interesting, actually, there's more of you saying your purpose is focused on what we do for others than having a clear purpose. Uh, I find quite an interesting reaction, but 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 just, just to reflect on those findings. So 78% of you said we have a clear purpose and 22% of you said that we don't have a clear purpose. So for those uh, one in five of you who, who are saying you don't have a clear purpose, I just it's worth reflecting upon whether or not you think that's an opportunity, I think, for your organization. You know, are we missing something by not having that clarity of purpose that we, that we might wanna have? Um, and, and it's great to hear that 84% of you are focused on what we do for others, because I think that is the key thing about purpose that sometimes gets missed. We hear, you, 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 I'm sure you've, you've come across this. You talk to leaders or managers who sort of dismiss the purpose question a bit. Well, you know, it's obvious we're here to make money for our shareholders and what have you. I think purpose goes beyond that and it's important that it should. Um, but for the 16% of you who said, no, we don't focus on other people, again, reflect upon that because I'm going to move on now to look at why this is important um, and, uh, and, and, and demonstrate why, why focusing on other people is important. Um, Yasna, I've got on my screen a picture of myself. I, I, I'm wondering if I should close that. Uh, no, it's perfectly fine. We see your slides. Okay, fine. We see your okay. slides in. So it's okay, okay. So, okay, thank you. Good. All right, so look, that's purpose. Why is purpose so important? I wanted to look at this from a number of different angles. Um, and first of all, I wanted to look at it from the perspective of the um, consumer and, and economic value and performance. And I, I, by the way, I'm gonna, there's, a, there's a section at the end of this where all the resources that I've used in this, I'll, uh, I'll highlight where they are and where you can get them from, and they'll be included in the recording that we send to everybody. Um, so first of all, I looked at, um, um, I don't know if you've come across Havis, mean, Havis the, the media group's meaningful brands survey that they've been running for, since about 2006. And basically what they're interested in is exploring, I think it's the only study that does this, they're exploring those, how, which of those brands that people perceive to 
to to give them something that benefits personal and collective well-being you know brands that actually do something a lot more than just uh, exist to 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 be corporate successes we saw some of them earlier actually because the ones that stand out in the in the havers survey are brands like google whatsapp paypal samsung and youtube you know they they help us perform better they help us perform or, or deliver on our purpose better but the, the point is that these meaningful brands these brands that go beyond and and, and are perceived to be doing something for the for a broader well-being outperforms the stock market brands generally in the stock market actually this says 133 percent actually it's gone up because the latest have us report which was published uh, recently is makes that difference 206 percent so there's kind of there's a kind of brand value around um, being purposeful on the right hand side we've got um, the purposeful um, company a report or a task force that was commissioned by the Innovation Center. This is the, the purposeful company task force included people like the Bank of England, London Business School, FTSE 100 companies, the leading companies in the UK, uh, some of the big investment houses. Um, and they, they did a, a really far reaching review, which included amongst other thing, things, something like 15 different academic studies that have been conducted between 2006 and 2016 that looked at the relationship between purpose and performance. And you can see the conclusion that they came to. This is this is taken from, I think it was their interim report. Purpose is key to corporate and economic success. Great companies are enabled by the pursuit of clearly defined visionary corporate purposes, um, which set out for how we can be better. And, and the, so again, the point is, is the evidence is pointing to success being linked to purpose, having clear purpose actually delivers a business benefit. And for those of you who talked about perhaps not having a clear purpose, or maybe who who are who need to persuade other people that purpose is important, I hope some of these these uh, resources might be helpful. So there's a kind of economic and a consumer stroke brand argument to this. There's also the employee engagement argument. Uh, I suspect some of you are familiar with this. Certainly in the UK, um, if not much more broadly. The um, Engaging for Success report, which was written by David McLeod and Nita Clark, I think it was published 2009. Um, basically, David and Nita were asked by the UK government to go out and explore the theme of engagement and whether or not engagement was something that companies should be should be should care about. Um, the answer to the latter question is yes, definitely it is. The, the, firstly, firstly, though, David and Nietzsche identified a number of enablers that are important to driving engagement within organizations. Um, and the narrative, the, the leadership narrative, as they described it, is one of the foremost of those. So a narrative is clearly expressed story about what the purpose of an organization is. So they, the, 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 the three other enablers, by the way, were um, working for an organization that delivered on its values, working for an organization that provided an employee voice and working for an organization where my managers and my managers engaged me. We'll come back to that theme a little bit later on. So purpose drives engagement is one of the key enablers. But more importantly, one of the things that they looked at was whether or not engagement actually drives perform performance. Um, and um, in 2012, Tanith Dodge came out with a fantastic report called Nailing the Evidence. Tanith was the HR director at Marks and Spencers. She worked with a team to look at a lot of the, the, the work that was out there, surveys, consultancies, and so on and so forth, and basically established that engagement appeared to be correlated with better profitability, productivity, better customer service, um, less employee turnover, less absence, better well-being, things like innovation as well. So a really comprehensive review of how, how engagement drives performance and how purpose is a key driver of engagement. And if you're interested in that, again, we'll look at it at the end, but the Engaging for Success website has all of that data on it and can be, can be a useful resource for everybody. Um, it's got lots of stories in there too about how companies go about uh, delivering on some of those enablers. So there's some kind of fairly compelling evidence, I think. There's also, I'm sure some of, I'm sure lots of you have actually have seen people like Simon Sinek and his video, you will be in good company, there's 36 million other people have looked at his video. It's, I think, one of the most popular TED videos. And Simon talks about starting with why. He talks about uh, the importance of purpose and how, and how purpose inspires and differentiates 
organizations. He does it a lot more um, eloquently than I. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play you just a couple of minutes of this this TED talk that he he delivered. For those of you who've seen it before, I hope it's a useful reminder. If you haven't seen it before, it's certainly something that's worth looking at. So let's hope the technology works. I'm just gonna start to to play this. Um, technology isn't working. Of course, it worked in rehearsals, but now it's not working. <laughs> I just wanted to say that, yes, it works perfectly fine. Um, oh, here we go. Good. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start. It's only two minutes. Um, he's, this is where he introduces his magic circle, what he calls the why, the how, and the what. And I'll leave him to, to take why, you through it. how, what. This little idea explains why some organizations and some leaders are able to inspire where others aren't. Let me define the terms really quickly. Every single person, every single organization on the planet knows what they do 100%. Some know how they do it. When you call it your differentiating value proposition or your proprietary process or your USP, but very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose, what's your cause, what's your belief. Why does your organization exist? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? And why should anyone care? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations, regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. Let me give you an example. I use Apple because it's easy to understand and everybody gets it. If Apple were like everyone else, a marketing message from them might sound like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Want to buy one? Yeah. And that's how most of us communicate. That's how most marketing is done, that's how most sales is done, and that's how most of us communicate interpersonally. We say what we do, we say how we're different or how we're better, and we expect some sort of behavior or purchase or vote, something like that. Here's our new law firm. Uh, we have the best lawyers with the biggest clients. We have, you know, we always perform for our clients to do business with us. Here's our new car. It gets great gas mileage. It has, you know, leather seats. Buy our car. But it's uninspiring. Here's how Apple actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You're ready to buy a computer from me. All I did was reverse the order of the information. What it proves to us is that people don't buy what you do, people buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. This it's a it's a great video. I haven't, if you haven't seen it before, I do suggest you go and have a have a look at it. And again, it, it could be a useful resource for you if you want to talk about this subject to other people in your organization. But I warn you, lots of people may may have seen it already. Um, so there's that, there's that kind of um, that sense of well, you know, talking about why is inspirational to us. But 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 why might that be the case? And I think the, the, the final piece I want to look at in terms of this evidence as to why purpose is important really looks to psychology and behavioral economics and neuroscience, because we're learning a lot at the moment. I mentioned this at the start about why focusing on things other than ourselves actually might be really important to boost motivation and performance. Um, I, again, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but Adam Grant, who's the professor of psychology at Wharton, wrote a book about this called Give and Take. Um, and, in, and, and one of the things he describes in this book is an experiment he did where he took a group of fundraisers for a university and he divided them in two. And one group of fundraisers he introduced to the beneficiaries of the work that they did. And this student talked to the fundraisers about how they benefited from the work the fundraisers did, only for five minutes. After that session, the performance of the group that had met the student went up by 170%, not just in the few days that followed that session, followed that meeting, but in the month that followed that meeting. Whereas the group that hadn't met the student, no difference. So the power of actually connecting ourselves to the people who are 
benefiting from the work that we do is really important, really powerful. That's been taken, I think, further by behavioral economics, which has looked at, in particular, what makes us happy. And there's a study by Elizabeth Dunn and her colleague called Pro-Social Spending and Happiness, which, which, which basically demonstrates that people, of course, we all need money to, 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 to survive, and money generally makes us happy. But how we spend our money makes us happier. So people focusing on other people and what we do for other people and resources and time on other people actually makes us happier in the long run, according to the what we're learning. And the science that might sit behind that is provided by people like Naomi Eisenberg, who's actually looked at what people who are caring for other people, how their brains are working in fMRI imaging studies. So she's put people in scanners and she's looked at what's going on in the neural circuits and basically demonstrated that stress-related areas of our, our brain go down, reward-related activities go up when we're thinking about caring and caring for others. So there's quite compelling evidence, economics, brand, um, employee engagement, um, neuroscience, behavioral psychology, demonstrating that purpose is important. There's also, just to finish this piece off, um, again, some of you may be familiar with this, the, 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 the studies that Gallup have done that suggest that purpose might be growing in importance. Um, the, the, in 2006, they conducted their How Millennials Want to Work and Live study. And to boil it down, one of the, the key conclusions of that was that purpose is becoming much more important for people who are in the sort of 21 to 38 year segment, that kind of millennial millennial group, as they defined it. I, I've, I've, I'm, I'm slightly skeptical of the idea that millennials are fundamentally different from other people. I think what this is actually picking up on is a growing trend generally for purpose growing in importance. And I think it's reflecting the fact that we're beginning to recognize how important that is for us. Anyway, so there's, 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 there's quite a lot of evidence and data there. Uh, which might be helpful if you want to talk to other people or persuade other people or yourself, you know, why this is a subject that we ought to think about. Let's have another quick poll. So again, two questions. We understand the business benefits of having a clear purpose, and you can answer that from the point of view of your organization or the your clients that you work for, or if you're, if you're an independent and you want to answer for yourself, you can, but, but try and think of organizations. And then my second question is, we invest in building shared purpose. Yasna, can I hand back to you and ask you to run those polls, please? Sure. Sorry, I was muted. Okay, 80% of the attendees voted. Let me okay, wait. Let's have a look at the results. A few seconds, and here are the results. 81%, we understand the business event. 90% no. Okay, and should we run the other one? I'll come back again and look yes. at that in a moment. Okay, so 78% voted. I will close the poll and here are the results. Okay, so much, much more better. of a kind of um, uh, even match on that one. So just to recap, so we understand the business benefits of having a clear purpose. We had 81 uh, agreeing and 19 saying no to, um, to that. Um, great for those of you who agree because I think you're right. I think the evidence all points in that way. Let's let's move on in a second and look at how one might do that. Um, those those again, that 90%, one in five of you who didn't um, um, agree with that statement might be worth reflecting on this. Might be worth thinking about using some of the things that we've just looked at with your colleagues if if you want to persuade your colleagues or or indeed reflect yourself on 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 what's coming up because. Some of this stuff is not theory, it's science. You know, the science is telling us this this, this is important now. So it's something I think we do need to worry about or, or, or invest in. And that investment thing, well, 50, basically half and half saying we invest in building shared purpose. So um, great for those of you who do, um, 
but for those of you who don't, let's let's look at some ideas about how 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 one might do that. So I'm going to move on now. Um, keep those questions coming in the chat box if you, if you'd like to. If you've got any concerns or issues you want to talk about, I'm going to move into the third bit now, which is talking about ways of um, building shared purpose and aligning people. The the um, the first thing I wanted to, to talk about in this thing was to distinguish between what I think are three distinct but overlapping activities. The, the process of contracting, which is about building ownership. It's about identifying the process we're going to go through and building ownership for this endeavor to build shared purpose. Discovery, which is about insights, collecting data and providing focus, it's like defining what our purpose is. Um, and, 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 and it's discovery because I think it's out there and it's a question of, of making, making, making it come to life for people. And then the third piece is around alignment. So that's about line of sight. How do we make sure everybody understands this? Now, the reason I, I wanted to flag this up and, hold, and, and put this in its own right and just talk about these three areas, because I think contracting is something that sometimes gets missed. Um, I don't know if any of you have experienced this. I certainly have, where you might be working for... Let's say it's the HR director. You do a lot of work around organizational purpose. You get back to present some of the findings and have a discussion. Suddenly you find that the marketing director's coming from somewhere completely differently because he or she's got their brand purpose and there's a conflict between the two. Um, or the finance director won't support what it is that you think needs to happen in terms of uh, communicating and sharing the purpose that you're working on. It's that, 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 that process of contracting is really important. So you need to get the buy-in and the ownership of the people who, who need to support the work that you want to do. And this model, contracting discovery engagement or framework or whatever you want to call it, can work at, at any level. It could apply to the whole organization or it might apply to a function, a functional um, team, or it could apply to a department or it could apply to a project. So it's, it's a, but whichever it applies to, I think you need to think about contracting discovery and engagement in particular contracting piece. The arrows just make the point that it's iterative. So as you go down the process of discovery, that inevitably you're going to involve leadership in contracting and discovery. That can actually build more ownership as we go down the discovery process. And in the discovery process, the approach that we take to defining what our purpose is, is going to inform the alignment approach. We'll, we'll come on to that in a second, look at some, some examples. But I just wanted to flag that up because I think it's important to be clear about those the distinction between those and the contract and the importance of the contracting process. So we talk about that a bit more. So I guess the first thing to say, so this is about designing the approach that we want to take and building ownership within, within the organization. I say assemble the right people. So who are the right people? Typically it's going to be the leaders or, or a subgroup of the leadership, but you, you, you'll probably know the answer to that question because the right people are the people whose support you're going to need to have in order to enable this process to work. Typically, as I say, it's the leadership, and the, but it's not, not necessarily only the leadership, and it's not necessarily the same group who's gonna do the sign off on what our purpose is at, at some point in the process. Um, but the contracting process, it, it, it typically involves a number of questions. Um, you know, why do we need to work on our purpose? What are we hoping to achieve by doing this? Who do we need to involve so it's successful? We'll come on to look at who that is in a second. Um, what's going to be critical to success? Knowing your organization as you do, you know, what, what will we need to do to make this successful for us? And how should we measure the success? And then what should our plan and timescales be? So it's fairly, it's a fairly um, not routine, a fairly important thing to do in terms of actually making sure we've got the ownership that we need to have. It's, the, it's at this point that you might want to get into things like terminology. You know, what do we mean by vision? What do we mean by purpose? What's the difference between the two? What are our, how do values fit into that? We want to look at that as well. Um, some of those things that I mentioned earlier or showed you earlier, Google and WhatsApp and PayPal, could be useful things to show people because that can get you into the conversation of what are the criteria that we need to use to evaluate whether or not we're moving in the right way in terms of our purpose statement. Things like, you know, is it, um, does it have longevity? Um, is it going to be appealing to our people? Will it have enough breadth to cover all the people that we have in, our, in the organization or the part of the organization that we're working with? So contract, contracting is really important and sometimes I think can get overlooked when you're designing the process. 
Discovery, so this is about identifying, describing, focusing and enriching purpose. And I think that the things to think about here are who do we want to do this with? What do we want to ask them and how are we going to do it? Now, the obvious answer to that question, the who question, is going to be the leadership. Um, but I don't think it should end at the leadership. Unfortunately, I think it often does. You know, you all, I expect many of you have experienced the leadership group that goes away for the weekend and comes back with its purpose statement and kind of hasn't involved anybody else in the process. And then there's a bit of surprise about why it might not actually take life within the business. I think you need at least to involve employees in, in the process. You should also be looking, I think, at customers and what they say and stakeholders, beneficiaries, agents who work for you and so on and so forth. So it's it, it, it's sort of casting that fairly wide in terms of getting input to the process. That that so what are you what do you want to talk to people about? Well, for me, there's 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 sort of a number of areas. You might ask the question in different ways, but basically, I I I like to look at when we're at a best, when we are at our best, what's happening that provides energy, it provides a sense of um, inspiration, appeals to people's emotions. If you focus on the positives. What do we do and provide to other people when we're at our best? And what are we doing that's different from other people? What do we do that others don't? What does that provide me? And why is that important to me? And I have different views, whether it's the employees or the customers. But so, so what's the value that that's delivering? And then internally, areas to explore is why we join, what do we value about working here, or what is it that we want in future? And externally, we might want to look at why do we use this company? Why do we buy from them? Why do we partner with them? What is it that we want from them? So going back to that definition of purpose, what we're interested in finding out is what is it that we do for other people? Um, now, the process of asking those questions could be varied. It could be getting people to tell stories. It could be using visuals, getting people to visualize it. It could be using pictures to stimulate conversations for people. It could be using questionnaires. I have a client that uh, came up with five purpose statements as part of its process and actually sent a questionnaire out to all its employees and asked them to rate the purpose statements based on how authentic they thought they were. And they included some things on their beliefs in there and which belief statements resonated with people and what other beliefs people would want to add to it. So there's, there's a, a variety of uh, ways of collecting this data. There's, there's some core things I think that it's important to collect. So for, ans for instance, if you think about those questions, and if I just think about a financial service business that we worked with recently, the, 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 the question about when we're at our best, what came through is that when they're at their best, they really understand my needs and they help me to understand my needs better because of the way in which they work with me. They, how do they do that? They do that. They do that by listening. They don't just phone me when they're trying to sell me something, which people feel about a lot of organizations. They actually they actually visit me or phone me because they want to understand more about me and what, what, what's happening for me and checking that we're okay. And how does that make me feel? Well, it provides me with a sense that they they really care and also gives me some insights to, for myself in, in terms of what my needs are. Um, why do I join this organization? Because they really do care. I want to work for a company that cares. I want to be part of that organization, and I want to be part of an organization that celebrates success. And for customers, why is that all important? Well, it helps me to do what it is that I want to do and live a better life and achieve the goals that I want to achieve. Remember that, have a survey, which is very much about that. The key message or the, the key takeaway from this is inclusivity. Make sure that in the process of uh, discovery, make sure that you in my view, cast the net widely in terms of, of who you want, to, who you involve. Third, third phase um, or third box or area, if, if you like, is engagement. Um, the emphasis here is on communication platforms. But before I talk about those, I just want to make the point that the, the leadership, the leadership communication, um, the systems that exist in the organization are all part of the process of, of building line of sight and building relevance for individuals. So the recruitment process, induction, the way in which we uh, reward performance, the way we describe people's roles, they're all part of the process of building engagement. And I focused a lot on the internal here because for me, getting the internal piece right actually is, help, is what helps deliver the message to, to, the, to external people. So just to pick up on, on some of the things here, um, 
you're, I'm sure you're all familiar with storytelling. There's been a, there's a lot of evidence that storytelling is a powerful way of communicating. I won't go into the, to that in depth. The Oxfam, I'll talk about um, Oxfam a bit more in a moment, but Oxfam is a fantastic organization at telling stories about why it's here, what it's here to do. And if, you're, if you receive any of the information from Oxfam, you'll be familiar with their, the storytelling and the communication they make to the, the, the people who contribute to them and their fundraisers and so on. Um, the picture below on the left here the, the, uh, is a picture that Oxfam created to create a big picture of their purpose and to encourage people to have conversations around that, which I'll look at in a bit more detail. Um, as, a, as a powerful tool to help people build line of sight. Brand is another great vehicle for another great platform for helping to build line of sight. And Threadneedle, I've mentioned, it's a financial service business we've worked with where we use the brand and the brand purpose to help people link their business planning with, their, with the purpose of the organization. So working with some of the managers, we use the brand as the platform for conversations about what should our business plans look like and what would represent success in terms of delivering on, on the purpose that the, the, the evidence from the brand work says we need to care about what our, because it's what our customers care about. Another great platform is customer experience, um, um, customer process. So I'm sure some of you have used that process. So we've used that with environmental groups where we're looking at how does our purpose translate into the interactions that we have with the customers that we deal with and what impact can we have in those on those interactions that will make a difference for our customers um, another another tool especially with the, the the growth in in employee apps are micro stories and videos that we use by a client we've been working with in the retail sector where they've taken uh, their purpose and their their strategy and converted it into small stories that are delivered to employees via apps and videos, by the, via videos on the apps. And gamification is another route, so scenarios that test people's understanding of how to respond in different situations given the, the purpose that we have and how we'd want to behave. I'm sure there's other platforms that, that you've used. There's, there's presentations, there's um, uh, conferences and workshops and so on and so forth. I think in all of this, the thing I really wanted to pull out in this is that how the leadership and the managers are com are completely critical in getting this right because they're the people people turn to when they want to know more about well, what does this actually mean for me and it's the conversations we have with the leaders and the managers that are critical in bringing this this piece to life and making it relevant for me i'm just going to end with a um uh, kind of a look at that process in a in a in a slightly different way so this is something that i use for helping to describe the leading the big conversation process. So I'm a big advocate and a believer in the use of a big picture as a platform for change and, and, and for discussions about purpose and strategy. Um, unfortunately, people can focus on the picture, whereas actually what's important is what happens before and after. So I call this the hourglass. And on the left-hand side, you've got a lot of work going in to create this understanding of what it is that we're trying to communicate to our people and to our customers through our people, then then the creation of a uh, of a platform to do that, and then that becomes something that is um, uh, a way of prompting conversations, hundreds of conversations, sometimes thousands throughout an organisation. And just at the bottom, the really important thing that sits that runs along through alongside this part of the contracting process is the design team that makes this happen, that own the process to make this happen for us. Um, now, if you just want to look at what what that actually might look like. So I'm, I showed you the Oxfam picture earlier. Here's the actual work that the design team did to help articulate purpose for Oxfam. The challenge they had was not that people weren't passionate. People were very passionate about working for Oxfam. But how do we actually build more of a sense of shared purpose and align people with our organizational purpose? So this picture was generated to prompt conversations between teams about why we've joined and how what we do fits into this bigger picture of where we're trying to get to. Um, we're trying to get to an end to the injustice of poverty for everyone. This is a picture about us. And in this picture, there's the history of the organization, the bottom left, themes around the transformation we're trying to go through, our values, how we won't live with poverty. But it was used as a platform for conversations about why I joined and how I see myself fitting in within this and what that might mean for me and how I work. And in terms of the results, I'll just 
just touch upon these before we, we, we stop and listen to some of the questions that you might have and talk about those. Uh, here's some of the feedback from people at Oxfam in terms of how they they felt as a result of having those conversations about um, purpose and, and where we're going. So even though it's at Oxfam, you probably couldn't find an organization where there's much higher levels of passion in terms of why people joined, actually creating that shared purpose and that alignment is really important. And if you go right back to that story that I told you at the start, this is where the, the rubber hits the road. It's about creating that frontline sense of why it is that I work for this organization and why it means so much for me and how I contribute to purpose, and delivering on that purpose. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there and I'm just gonna invite Yasna to um, uh, run me through any of the questions that you might have and we can spend the last 15 minutes talking about those. Okay, thank you so much, Mike. Um, there are some questions. Um, so um, most of them I already answered because they were technical. Um, attendees wondering if um, they will receive the slides, uh, which I already answered, that the recording will be available um, tomorrow. You will, uh, you will receive the link. Um, so uh, let me begin with... Um, Liesl Weber's uh, questions, uh, question, sorry. Yeah, it's two question, actually. Uh, so Mike, uh, what process tips do you have to deal with more traditional CEOs, leaders, uh, who see purpose as meeting shareholder and stock market value? Um, was it Liesl who asked that question? I didn't catch the name. Yes, yes, Liesl yeah. uh, Weber. Thank, thanks very much for that. I think that's probably one of the most Im important challenges that, that, that we face. So let me give, give, give you some thoughts on that. First of all, there's the, the evidence that we've been looking at, and there's more evidence out there. So there's, there's data around that tells us that purpose is important, that it drives performance. So we, we can choose to ignore that evidence. We don't have to, to respond to it, but it, it's there. And it, 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 it kind of makes the argument very clearly that purpose is a business driver. And and getting your leadership to talk about that and think about that could be helpful. Now, that's not gonna work for everybody, I know. So other thoughts about how you persuade leaders to get in, in to take this more seriously, um, go to the people that influence them. Can you, can you provide them with some of this information to get them to talk to them about why this is important? Talk to your suppliers, talk to your customers, talk to your employees gather data that suggests, if it does suggest, that actually we need to do something about this. Um, a lot of the work that I've done follows on from employee data that says, actually, we don't have a clear sense of where it is we're trying to get to, and we need to do something about that. Um, at the end of the day, obviously, it's a, it's a conversation that the leadership team needs to have, but, but we need to provide input or supply them with, with things that's going to help them with that. Okay, thank you. And uh, another question from Elisel is, um, how do you keep the, the momentum on purpose? Uh, there tends to be energy at the start and then day-to-day -day reality takes over and it gets pushed to the side. Yeah. Quite common, right? Yeah, another, another great question. Thank you. How do you sustain um, purpose? The responsibility is leaderships at the end of the day. I mean, leadership has to keep talking about it, has to keep messaging about it, it needs to keep a focus on it. But it's not just leadership. Uh, the systems that we have in the, the business are important too. You know, the way the way we um, reward performance, the way we recruit people, who we recruit, the things that we talk about in terms of the, uh, the things that matter to us as an organization, the feedback we provide, the data we collect and the customer satisfaction we, 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 we focus. And then, you know, the ongoing things that, that the tools that we might want to use, videos, I mentioned micro videos earlier, you know, um, release um, a, a series of videos. So rather than just one one piece, sustain it over time, um, which that retailer organization I mentioned was doing. Another client of ours um, builds the conversation around purpose into team discussions on a, on a six monthly basis. I think they're on their 13th round of doing this. So they've been doing it for something like five or six and a half years so that it, keep, it keeps coming back to the team discussions and we, we, we have a conversation around purpose. Um, depending upon what approaches you're using, videos, visuals, what have you, build it into the iconography of uh, what you 
what, uh, what and how you communicate to people. Check on it in your employee surveys, in your customer surveys, the measures and the feedback. Um, refresh the purpose. I don't think purpose should change, but sometimes we might want to refresh the purpose within the function or the team that we're working within. You know, at our annual away days, are we delivering on what we said we should be delivering? How do we sustain it? Get people involved in that conversation. So I think there's a number of approaches that you, you can take. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we have quite a lot of questions. So uh, the next one is from James Brown. Um, agree with the point about purpose being a growing trend, not just a millennial phenomenon. Then Pink uh, adds some interesting motivators to purpose, namely autonomy, mastery as additional job motivators. Uh, hi, James. Thanks very much. I don't know whether the, whether Dan Pink's prompting what you just said, but I agree with you. There's, there's a, a book called Drive written by a guy called Dan Pink where he identifies autonomy, mastery, yeah. And somebody, I can't remember what the third one is, but, but it'll probably come to me as soon as we finish the webinar. But those things are are, are really important. So, you know, those, those personal things. So what does mastery mean? Mastery means that I feel like I'm, um, I'm not only being challenged, but I'm mastering things. I'm getting better. I'm progressing. Um, in neuroscience, David Rock has a, a model called SCARF where he talks about status amongst other things and the importance of status. And status is a part of status. It's about feeling that I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm, I'm, I'm achieving things. Autonomy is about actually being you know, able to make decisions in the way that I want to make them. If I go right back to that, that study that I talked about at the beginning, one of the things that came out of those stores that did well is that they had much more autonomy in them because people have more clarity around purpose. So I think those drivers are, are really important. Thanks, James. Okay, um, now Vedran. Hi, Vedran. Um, hello, Mike. This is Vedran. You have, uh, you have mentioned working with banks. What is their purpose? Oh, <laughs> here's, the, here's, the, here's the one where I think I have most challenges around fin the, the argument about financial versus um, a, a bigger purpose. Um, and I can think of an organization I've worked with recently where the CEO was quite resistant to the idea that the purpose of the organization was anything beyond making a good return. Um, the, 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 the interesting thing when you, when you work in the banks or financial services, I think, is that a lot of the people who work there, especially those who have customer contact, would see the purpose as, being, as going far beyond that. You can, you can choose if you're a bank to just focus on financial returns. That's obviously your prerogative. But I think the, the point I'd make is that you're missing out on so much more that could be achieved if you manage to, to raise your eyes above that horizon and think about what it is that you're doing for the people that you're helping. And, and that, that connection between the financial services that we provide and what that enables people to do is really important uh, and it's easily missed. Um, I mentioned a financial services organization earlier when I was talking about the, um, the, the data we were collecting during the discovery process. If you talk to the people actually in the organization, in that financial service organization, they were really clear about what they were there to do. They were not there to make money for the business. They were there to help the customers that they dealt with. So it was kind of, it was a very strong sense of purpose that actually wasn't being recognized enough at, at more senior levels. And so bringing that to life for people is, is important and helping leadership make that connection between a more or a deeper meaning and how that might benefit their performance. I mean, you might say it's quite a, a cynical argument because actually in the, at the end of the day, you're, you're meeting them in the terms of their needs about thinking about, well, we'll make more money by, by doing this. But, um, but I, I hope that answers your question. Uh, thank you, Mike. Um, Andris uh, has another question. Can you give us examples of questions you use to get people to tell what gives them purpose? Sorry, say the question again, Yasna. I missed that. Um, can you give us examples of questions you use to get people to tell what gives them purpose? Um, well, yes, they were, they were sort of in that discovery slide. So I, 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 I would talk to people about issues like when you've really felt that you are performing at your best and that you're happiest at work, what's going on? What, and what does that tell you about what it is that makes you come to work in the first place? 
when you're feeling like that, what effect are you having on other people? So how does that, how does performing like that actually uh, benefit you and benefit other people? And what difference does that make to people? I've done a lot of work in this area. So typically we might start with a group of people. We might get them to think about when when I've been most happy at this my job, what's been going on? And then we start to pull out some of the themes that come out from that. You'll hear things like clarity of direction, feeling I was doing something worthwhile, helping other people, working with colleagues where I felt respected and, and recognized. And in the process of, of exploring that data, you can begin to pull out some key themes around what it is that we think is important for us being here. Uh, thank you. Um, Stuart is asking, Mike, this webinar is about alignment. Uh, you show the big picture as a tool for this, but I believe strongly in a set of words that everyone can understand and use. What are your views on that? So I missed it. I believe passionately. What was the, what was the point? Uh, but I believe strongly in a set of words that everyone can understand okay. and use. Okay. What's your yeah. use? I, I think you? both. I think, thank you. I think, thank you for the question. I think both are important. Um, so we looked at purpose statements. I think they're important. Um, I think that the, 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 the purpose statements are great because they provide focus and they, they provide that, that sense of what we're doing for other people. But at the end of the day, that, that, that's not a lot of meat in terms of what we can then build upon to, to bring that to life for people. So if, you, if I want to align people with purpose, I'm looking for other tools or additional tools that will help um, enable them to, to get involved in conversations and, and then exploring what that means for me. And things like pictures or customer experiences or the brand and what the brand means for our customers and stories about what people say about us, I think they're important tools as well. So yes, purpose statements great important to codify and focus what we do but then we, how do we bring that to life and i think we need to look to other tools to do that um okay i want to uh, add christine's uh, uh, comment really uh, related to uh, vedran's questions uh, question about the bank um, and she says lloyd's bank has a purpose to help britain prosper so that's an interesting one yeah well, it's well, certainly fo focused on other people rather than just the bank yeah. and what they want to do for other people. Yeah, there. Why? Okay, so we have uh, one last question, which is from Antonio Marquez. Uh, working with storytelling, uh, storytelling techniques uh, is a good way to promote our purpose, right? The engagement is more effective. I I'm terribly sorry, Asna. Could you say the question again? Yes. I missed it. Um, Working with storytelling techniques is a good way to promote our purpose, right? The engagement is more effective. Um, I think storytelling is a very powerful process, yeah. And the reason why storytelling is, a, uh, is effective is interesting because it's when you start telling stories to people, you, as opposed to presenting a PowerPoint or whatever, you immediately get people to put yourself, put themselves in your shoes and empathize with the stories that you're telling. It, 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 it creates a different dynamic in terms of the relationship that I, we have with each other. Uh, and there's science behind this as well. I won't go into the neuroscience, but there's science behind this. So storytelling is very effective. Yeah, it helps people empathize. So it appeals at the rational as well as the emotional level. So it's an important tool. Thanks for that. Okay, and uh, I think uh, we are just on time. So uh, we have one minute left and I wanna uh, thank you, Mike, again for uh, a wonderful webinar um, and thank of course all the attendees uh, I think that this was one of our record um, webinars in terms of the attendees and also I would like to invite everybody uh, to save the date so the 9th and the 10th of April uh, our yearly Eurocom conference is in Copenhagen so uh, please note that and uh, you will receive or uh, you had already received uh, some information um, via mailing and uh, we'll provide you with more shortly. Um, right now we are still um, we're still accepting the proposals for speaking. So if you're interested in that, uh, please go to ibcmina.com and, and apply and we'd love to have you there. Yeah, Yasna, could I just interrupt for one second before you close the webinar? Of course. Yeah, I of just course. wanted to, I mentioned resources earlier on and I just wanted to briefly touch upon those. 
there's this will be in the recording so this is for, this is my sense of a kind of summary of the key messages that that i've been trying to get across uh, but you've heard all of those so i won't run through them and then here are some of the resources that i mentioned um, so if you want to learn more about this and you for those of you who talked about how we persuade other people here are the, here are some some areas that you can go to that will help provide that and there's the damn pink reference that somebody mentioned in a question i think yes sorry to interrupt i just well, I, I i didn't want people to to not realize that this was here yes thank you very much and um stay tuned for another webinar in about a month okay thanks very much thanks everybody thanks Bye. yasna thank Bye. you